you don't want the government to do, you know, too many additional things, it would be very dangerous. Now, the problem with the software practice is activism is it's very, very technical. It's very difficult to understand. It's very hard to get involved. It takes years to become good enough as an activist to actually do anything useful. So I can't even tell you where to go to help. Sorry. However, as, as Jan said, we have started other initiatives which may act as kind of entry into this, into this debate. One of them is the Digital Standards Organization. Now, we know this, that standards are a very important topic. We know this for a long time. We know that they become a very political topic a year or so ago. Now, the reason for that is that the amount of money that standards represent is huge. If you look at them, in any, any market in IT now is about a trillion, a trillion of euros, and they can change on the control of the two and, of course, we saw Microsoft's attempt to get the ISO sample, the double sample, on their office format, go away to hell. I was talking about it. It was something like this, it was Microsoft, we love you, we love you. Um, standards are political. When the Dutch government produces a brochure saying, this whole government, but for open source and open standards, you can be sure that there are very expensive lobbies, lawyers, and consultants going and trying to break that, that policy. So, I had the idea last year, in September, with some friends, that there was no real organization anywhere in the world actually fighting for open standards. There's one. W3C doesn't do it. W3C says we, we, will, we will support for these kind of standards. We will accept patents in other domains. What about the way? Patents are bad in any domain of software. And they are better than anything else. And I don't think do this. But no one is really doing this. We set up a new organization, a digital kind of organization. We began this last year in September. And we signed, I think, quite a joint declaration about a week ago in the day. And we have, I think, 2,000 supporters on this now. Which is pretty good. Without any press release, it's just blogs. Now, the point of the digital standards is follows. To focus attention really on the question of how what we call free and open standards are produced. How companies try to control the standards. How to manage that process. And a big part of the control is software practice. Possibly, I mean, it's the ultimate control. If you look at any conflict between Linux and Microsoft, it will always come down at some point to a patent or a bunch of patents or the threat of patents. All the rest can be solved. You can solve secrecy, you can solve complexity, you can solve, you know, complicated doc file formats. You can, you can, you can do all that. It takes time to have time. Patents you cannot solve. They are a legal instrument that stops you from solving the problem for 20 years. So, Microsoft's ultimate tool, and not just Microsoft, there are many companies. Microsoft's ultimate tool is the software practice in the right place. Stop the competition. The biggest threat to Linux and the simple product is the threat of application to software practice. By showing how this affects standards, we can show more concretely how it affects the whole industry. So what you can do to support us is you can find a position. It's on digistand.org. For those visiting online, it's on digistand.org. Make it 2001. You can get involved in the work group. You can help us start a brief chapter of DigiSpan. Basically, it's a mailing list that we'll make for you. It's a website you can make. I'm going to become already already attracted to our documents. Do you have a already? I'm sorry. Go to the website. Agreed? No. Okay. We'll make one. You can then take digital standards organizations, documents, techniques, knowledge to your government, and you can say, we have a right in our new government to, to free and open standards. It's our right to And if government is also open standards, which they all want, then they all become eventually activists against the open standards, and that's how we deal with the game. There's no other way. You can delay all of the legal maneuvers. We're probably never going to get a law which bans open standards. But we can recruit governments as an agent 
and then they become like our clients, we software, our users, our salesmen, our managers, and then they will one by one work with the software time. Thank you very much. This is open source and it has also an open source model policy on its own. Uh, what do you believe that this company should do for its product to be competitive? Because in this model it's open to attacks from, from the competitors. Yeah. So the question is how do you make it a better product? Now, understand that people can always copy a product, yes, if you make a better design or a mobile model, and then you copy it. Now, if you look at this from the point of view of the customer, or the, sorry, the company actually making that first version of the first the market, it really sucks to have someone copy your product. It's really bad. I mean, it's, really, it's really sad. If you look at it from the point of view of society, it's fantastic. Suddenly you have choice. The cost will go down. Let's say that I'm going to make a little PC, the EEPC, which some people have here. And now let's say that someone else makes a small PC which is cheaper. Is that good or bad? I mean, they copy the idea. Yeah? I just basically found the market last year. And suddenly, you know, HP is in the same state. Oh my god! Is that good or bad? Competition is always good. Competition is what makes human society rich enough to feed and clothe us. Competition comes from companies who are pushing to be the first to market better products. That's the way it is. Trying to stop competition will make actually nobody richer. And the answer is, here's the answer to your question. As the market gets more complex, companies specialize. Companies don't actually make identical products unless they're in a very boring market like softwares. And even there, they specialize. Pepsi and Coke actually are different products. So do different people. It's like, you know, cat lovers and dog lovers, or coke lovers and empty lovers, those who hate all subjects. And so in a complex market, which is what we have, there is enough space to diversify. That means that there is actually only competition to occupy the space. Once you're there with a good product, you will own it, as long as you are good. I can give you a good example, which is the iPod. I'm a big fan of Apple, although they're also a big fan. The reason that Apple understands how to win in both markets. They do by being very good, understanding what people want, giving it to them, and charging a lot of money. So, Something like five or ten years, and you can maintain it by maintaining your software. 
So you keep releasing software, you're getting your copyright. If you stop it after 10 years, it becomes free there or a conservancy way. The reason why there was a push to extend copyright is because there are large companies like Disney who make a lot of money from very, very old works. I mean, who spends it nobody? 